The Carl B. Phillips Show. Hosted by me, Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Get ready for another great conversation on The Carl B. Phillips Show. Welcome to The Carl B. Phillips Show. I am Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. On today's show, my guest is Dallas, Texas native. She's a gospel recording artist, actress, and she is a featured vocalist with Kirk Franklin and the family. Please help me welcome Keisha Grandy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, as I warned you, we are going to have a couple of random questions. Okay. So the first random question, name a song that you thought you knew the words, but later found out you were singing the wrong words. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a perfect question. So I cannot remember the year. It was at GMWA right after uh, I stopped singing with Kirk, sang on Millie Dickerson's showcase, and I sang I Am Persuaded. And I did not know the lyrics. Is that Fred Hammond's I Am Persuaded? Uh, no. Um, is it Thomas Whitfield? Thomas Whitfield. I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. Yes. I have been changed to bless your name. Okay. I don't know how. I The words just left the building up here. And <laughs> the room was full of gospel artists. And that was like the most embarrassing moment of my life. So what I've learned in church services when that happened, Lord, I love you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Just go in the worship. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Your life has been surrounded by music since the age of four years old. At what point did you realize singing is your life's purpose? Um, probably around the age of 13, 14. Okay. Um my first out of town trip with my church choir and I uh, sang for the good of them. I was so nervous. And my uncle, uh, Don Ali, so he kept saying, niece, you can do this, you can do this. And I was like, I ain't never done this before. And he convinced me. And that was the first time I said, okay, I, I think I can do this. You think you can do this? Oh so, yeah. <laughs> About 87, 1987. Mm -hmm. Wow, 87. That was yeah. that was a few years ago. Oh, yeah. You also studied classical music while attending high school. What classical training do you use when singing gospel music? Oh, gosh, all the time. Um, my breathing techniques, um, my diction. You're gonna always know what I'm saying because that was a stickler that my my instructor had. Every people have to understand what you're saying. So, um, yeah, those two main things. I, I always make sure that my dic. I mean, it just comes second nature now. So I always make sure that my diction is correct, and I'm I when I sing, I, my my breathing techniques are gonna always be in place when I do sing. A lot of classical people take issue with gospel singers because gospel singers, oh, yeah. we're going we gonna to give it to you. Mm -hmm. How do you find that balance in knowing what classical singers do, but knowing you got to get it up when you're doing gospel music? Uh, a little story. Um, Michael Terrell, may God rest his soul in peace. He is the reason why I know how to sing classical and know how to read music and sing jazz. Every Monday morning, when I would get to school, everybody that went to Booker T, Myron Butler, you know, all the greats that was in my class, the first thing Michael Terrell would say to me when I walked in class and I sat down on those bleachers, he would say, Lakeisha Grandy, say something. So I'm looking like, mm -mm, you've been down at that church house screaming and hollering again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, yes, it just, yeah, it's hard to balance it. And I had to make a decision actually, 
Mm -hmm. um, before I began singing gospel music, uh, that was going to be my career, was being a classical uh, singer. Um, I was training to become that, and it's just not possible to sing gospel music the way I sing gospel music and be a classical singer. It just can't happen because your voice has to be a certain way to sing classical music. So I had to make a decision, either sing classical music or sing gospel. Um, I did sing a classical piece on a guy by the name of Bobby Sparks that was our musician in the, uh, with Kirk Franklin and the family. And I sang uh, Here's One on that project. Um, but it was so hard because I had not sang classical in that manner in a long time. So yeah, got to pick one. You can't do both. So maybe somewhere down the road, we can do a Keisha Grandy spiritual classical classical spiritual album kind of oh, like yes. uh, Kathleen Battle did. Oh yes, Kathleen Battle and Jesse Norman. Yeah, I love that album. Maybe Ooh, we can get, get at least get a, a one or two spiritual songs out of you in a classical rendition. Would hmm. love to do something like that. Hmm. May have to talk to your producer about that. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Outside of music, you also have a bachelor's degree in communication. Yes. Why did you pursue a degree in communications? At the time, I was uh, selling real estate and um, just wanted to boost my knowledge of the business a little more. So I went back to school to, um, I had already been in school when I first met Kirk. So I just returned to school and um, my concentration is in sales and marketing. So it all just fit for me at that time. So that's why I did. Um, you know, you bring up an interesting point because um, my background is sales. As a okay. recording artist, we have to know how to sell ourselves and sell our brand. You know, I tell people all the that's time right. as an artist, you are a brand. How did you kind of transfer what you learned in communications to now mm -hmm. what you're doing as an artist? Um, well, this whole social media thing is something that I'm learning, but I know that that those tools dealing with social media is so important. So I incorporate like doing the videos and, you know, doing all those sort those sorts of things, uh, making sure that I'm posting enough, making sure that I'm talking to people. I'm going to start singing more uh, on, on social media. So those teachings that I learned, how to communicate with people, talking on platforms such as yours. So it definitely helped in that manner when it comes to my degree as well. You're also an actress. You've traveled the yes. world, appearing in plays, including the lead role in Tyler Perry's I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Yes. Talk about your life as an actress and what being on the stage acting means to you. Um, so again, I went to a, a, a performing arts school, so we learned how to do all of that stuff. That got that school was such a blessing. And my first uh, musical was Carmen Jones. So, you know, when you know how to do that and then you're able to incorporate doing musicals with uh, gospel stage plays, it's, 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 it's different in how it's delivered, but the teachings is pretty much the same of how you deliver. So um, doing those plays, is it was such an awesome, awesome experience. Um, working with Tyler was a great experience because he's so crazy. Um, so every night the show was different. That's different when you're doing musicals, theatrical musicals, and you're doing stage plays, you know, in the, in, the, in musicals, you have to do everything the same way, no breaking character, none of that is allowed. But when you're doing plays with Tyler, you can break character because you can't help it because Tyler is crazy. So <laughs> he's saying something crazy every single night and we can't help but to laugh. And the, but the audience love that kind of stuff. When you're in character and they see you break character, they think that is the, just the most hilarious thing ever. So, you know, yeah, that's how that's how that goes. Any prospects for some future acting roles down the road? Yes, it is. Yes, I'm, I'm we are Ernest and I are in talks now of uh, doing a production that's coming up soon. 
Ooh, we we got some information now. Something yes. coming up in the pipeline. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, here's the next random question. Okay. If you had the power of teleportation, where would you go to right now? Where would I go to right now? If you could teleport to anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? Bermuda. Bermuda? Why Bermuda? I love Bermuda. It's a very calm place. And the food is good. And the sand is beautiful. And it's not a lot of rah-rah over there. <laughs> so um, I, it's just a place that's very serene. I don't like a lot of stuff going on. I like the calm and quietness. So Bermuda would definitely be the place that I would definitely return to. I would, I have yet to do Bermuda, but um, I love the Atlantic Ocean. So it's- Yeah, amazing. it's beautiful. Anything along the Atlantic Ocean. Pacific yes. Ocean was cold. I just like the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel music world discovered you singing Silver and Gold on Kirk Franklin and the Family's Why We Sing video. So before I ask a question, I'm going to have to say this. I, I was watching the video last night, and I'm like, Keisha got that alto flipped up hairdo <laughs> that y'all had back in the day. And that, you know, they, they joke, because that, that was the save woman hairdo. Yes. <laughs> paper bible <laughs> that pompadour <laughs> yeah you was looking real sanctified and holy had on the long dress yes filled with the holy ghost <laughs> <laughs> yes man. i was like whoa she was she was she was churching back then <laughs> yeah <laughs> talk about how being in that video impacted your life um, at the beginning, I never would have thought the impact that it would have on the world, in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, even to this day, I'm still recognized as Keisha Grandy, the silver and gold girl. And it's such an honor to be able to have sang that song in spite of, I'm not the original singer of the song. The original singer uh, left the group. Mm -hmm. And by the time it was time for us to record the video, that's when Kirk asked me to start singing Silver and Gold. So I never thought that, because at that time I was what, at that time I was probably 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just a kid that was just happy to be there. So for me, I didn't know the life-changing things that would happen in my life due to singing that song. Never knew it. So for today, you know, when people call me a legend and, you know, you changed, y'all changed gospel music, that was something that we never thought about, you know? We were just happy just to be there to sing. So, I mean, for me, it's not nothing that makes me think a certain way. I'm just grateful that God was able to use me to be mm -hmm. able to sing that song and still have an impact on people when it comes to it. So I'm, I'm noticing in the background, you have the, uh, was that platinum and gold Kirk Franklin album? Okay. Okay. Yes. Show it. Show it. Look at that. <laughs> That's my so place. you are also the lead singer on Savior More Than Life Than Me, to me. Yes. And the Christmas project, The Night That Christ Was Born. Yes. What was it like working with Kirk in the early days and during those recordings? It was amazing. Um, I was his little sister, so I was I was the one that got spoiled. I was <laughs> the youngest one in the group, so they saw me through all of my growing pains. They, <laughs> boy, did they see it. <laughs> um, but the experience of it all, you know, it was I mean mesmerizing. You know, I was able to sing on the Grammy Awards. I, I performed on the Image Awards. I mean, we did so much. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we're not thinking about, you know, where we are and how impactful this could be to so many other people. We were just happy just to be a part. We just wanted to sing. So doing all of that stuff was just a blessing. We just never knew that some of the places that we were able to be in, the spaces that we were in, we never would have thought that we were we, that we would have ended up in those spaces. We were just country kids, country people from Dallas, Texas, that was just happy to be there, and we loved to eat. <laughs> you know, it's, 
I had an opportunity one time Kirk was coming to Detroit uh -huh. and uh, my ex-wife, she wanted to cook dinner for the family. Ooh. So I don't know if you were a part of that or not, but David, Tamala, and all of the family members were at my house. My wife had been out in the backyard cooking barbecue, <laughs> and they were like, it felt so good just to come in and sit down and have a real meal. And I remember yeah. we, we picked David up from the airport, and I'll never forget David. Go walks off the plane. Just back when you can meet Peter at the gate, David was like, I got gas. <laughs> That's, that sounds like David. <laughs> yeah, he's just hilarious. Sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> just crazy uh, more than likely I probably was um, those days are days that I will never ever forget ever I mean you know people look at Tam and David and Kirk as superstars mm -hmm. but with these people I know what they fart smell like I know how they snore so <laughs> I just know them as them being them and they all each one of them have been such a blessing in my life for my whole life well the, the since I've been uh, 18 years old I've just uh, you know everything that I've learned pretty much musically uh, on the gospel tip came from Kirk um, he was the big the big brother he was the sort of like father when I was in trouble he was I mean he was everything he got me my first apartment he told me it was time to meet for me to get out of my mama's house get out your mama's house. I'm going to find you somewhere to live. <laughs> wow. So he was, yeah, he was that person for me. He made sure, you know, before I could stay in the family, you know, he had to go talk to my mom. You know, he, I said, well, I want to be in your group, but you got to talk to my mom. I was 18. So mm -hmm. he went to talk to my mom and she was like, well, I'll see, you know, she's in school, but let me think about it. And of course he definitely convinced her and, you know, he made sure he kept his word. He looked out for me. He took care of me. So there's nothing bad that I can say about the man. So speaking of Kirk Franklin, recently you had the opportunity to reconnect with Kirk, the family, yes. and God's property for the reunion yes. tour. How did it feel to be back together again? Oh, man. <gasps> Being back with those people was absolutely surreal. It was amazing. It felt like we never left each other's side. Being back around him in that capacity was, it was amazing. It was totally amazing. You know, he had me singing and it was so funny. <laughs> he said, after I finished singing Silver and Gold, he said, little one, wow. You are still so powerful. Kirk, I'm not 18 no more. <laughs> <laughs> I am no longer a little one, but I guess in his eyes, I will always be the baby. So right. he went back into that mode of treat me like a baby. You okay? You all right? I love you. Give me a kiss. <laughs> so it was, it was like we never left each other's side. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes. Um, you recently posted on Instagram about how two years ago you were battling COVID and blood clots. You were very yeah. transparent in that moment. But God turned that moment into a testimony. Talk about that period of your life and how God turned it around for you. You know, I had just finished um, a project. I had just finished a project and was in the studio uh, recording a song with uh, a few people, including uh, Jessica Reedy. And one of the ladies there gave her a hug because, you know, Texas, we, we hug, hug. And I hugged her and not knowing, she didn't know that she had COVID. So from that moment, my life started turning like a whirlwind. Um, mm. Caught COVID. Um, the person that did my project took my project down. He wow. shut it down. So it was like everything was just happening all around the same time. And for me, I took it as, okay, that was not what God said for me to do at that moment. Right. He was blocking me from certain things that probably could have, could have happened in that time period. So he sat me down 
I was in the hospital for about a month mm -hmm. and had time to sit and think because at that time, nobody could be in the hospital room with you. Right. You know, you're totally by yourself. All you can see, all you see is the, is the nurses and the doctors. So that time I never turned on a television for that entire time I was there. I prayed constantly. I listened to worship music. Um, I, I, got, I, I was allowed to spend so much time with God and God was telling me at that point, don't worry, no matter what's going on right now, I did all of this for a reason. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of there and I realized what was going on and I figured out, okay, that project was not for me. That's not what God wanted me to do for with 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 those that I was involved in. That's not that's not the 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 avenue that God wanted me to go. Right. So you know, I chalked it up as you know, whatever God has for me is for me. I let it go. Mm -hmm. Started talking to Ernest Lee, who produced my my current project, and the ball just started rolling. Went from doing one thing for someone to him saying let's do your ep let's do it so in doing this ep things that i wanted to do for my last project god allowed it to happen for this one i was i got a distribution deal <laughs> thanks to carl b <laughs> have a distribution deal i have gigs that are lined up that's waiting for my project to hit. So it all worked out for my good. But when that project got taken down, I didn't cry. I didn't get upset. I just knew, I just knew that this was God's doing. I knew that God was lining everything up for it to work out in my favor. So, you know, I would tell anybody, don't give up. It may look crazy at the moment, but you just got to keep trusting God that whatever's going on is God is allowing it to happen for a reason. And that was my whole outlook on the whole situation. God is doing this for a reason. And now I'm at the point to where I know this is why God did it. And I give him all the glory and praise and I'm happy. And I love my project because it is amazing. <laughs> Which kind of leads me to my next question. You talked about um, working with Ernest. Yes. And Ernest is a crazy producer, musician, songwriter. Oh, my God. Don't have you doing some awesome, crazy stuff. <laughs> yes. The yes. project is called Reborn. Yes. Talk a little bit more about working with Ernest and how he helped you to develop this body of work of Reborn. So, Ernest and I did a single, a song of his that was entitled So Holy. Love um, we did that about three years ago. I we did that it. about no, no, about four years ago. That bump at the end, yes, sir. I love that. <laughs> when I heard the song, I said, "You got to let me do this one. You got to let me." He was like, "Okay, okay, all right, you can do it." So now that song is my heart. That song is, you know, we didn't get to push it as much as we wanted to, but that song hits near and dear to my heart. So that's one of those songs that not many know about, but that's 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 definitely a heart hitter for me. Um, after we did that one, um, you know, during the, the process of Reborn, we did um, Kimberly McFarland's uh, um, For the Good of Them. Um, that's, uh, that, was, that was one of my first major solos. So I asked him, I said, can we do For the Good of Them? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. He put his twist on it, and I was like, yes, Jesus, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I got her okay. She said, I love it. Thank you for honoring me, because she's definitely one of the goats of my time. So I definitely had to pay homage to her. Um, the songs that Ernest did, you know, one of them is entitled Still Believe, Lord. He have to give his testimony about that song, but for me, that song ministers to my mind, heart, and soul because I've been in so many situations from a child onto now where I've had to say, excuse me, I've had to say that I still believe in spite of what I'm going through. Thank you, Lord. 
I still believe that God is still faithful and he is just. And I know that he didn't allow me to go through child molestation, to be abandoned by my, my mom, not knowing who my father was, to going to sing with Kirk and that situation ended the way that it did. And then doing my own project, my first one, and that ended the way that it did. I know he didn't bring me that far to leave me. So I believe that, I still believe that no matter what I was going through, that he was going to bring me out. Going through COVID, being married for 14 years, and that didn't work out. I still believe that God had a purpose and a plan for Keisha. Right. And I just thank God for it. So that song is definitely my fave on the project. Might not be nobody else's, but that's my favorite. Um, your your testimony with- that I hear now really speaks to you being reborn, which is yes. the title of the project. That's yes. what I hear now coming from you. For someone, and we're going to get back to the project in a, in a minute, but for someone who may have found themselves or maybe right now in situations like what you're experiencing, talk about how they can experience being reborn. You have to totally surrender to God. You have to totally surrender to God. You know, sometimes we feel like we have totally surrendered to God, but Mm -hmm. you have to totally surrender to God and give all of your problems, all of your issues. You have to turn those all over to God. You have to fast. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to pray. You have to keep doing that until you see the manifestation of God working through your life. And that's what I kept doing. I kept fasting, and I kept praying and I kept speaking the positive things. I kept speaking what I wanted to see before I could even see it. I kept speaking, sorry. I kept speaking what I wanted God to do in my life until I saw it come to pass. And I'm still speaking. I I mean, I'm on the right path, but I'm gonna keep speaking until I see everything that I want God to do in my life. So you gotta keep believing God that, and speak, you have to know what to ask for when you pray. You have to ask for those specific things. And my specific things were, send me somebody in my life to help me with my music that's going to be genuine, that's Mm -hmm. going to be doing this for no ulterior motive, but to worship and praise you. And Mm -hmm. God did that. He sent me Ernest and Ernest and I work so well as a team that I'm just, I thank God for every moment because I know it's nobody but God that's doing, doing this in my life when it comes to this project. The single Jesus be all right, which also features Ernest. Yes. What is the song about and what does it mean to you when you say Jesus be all right? Oh my God, it means that whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through is going to be all right at the end of the day. God is going to turn around whatever situation that you're going through. In the end, God is going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around for your good. And I'm a living witness that everything that I've been through, even trying to contemplate suicide, God said it wasn't my time. God Mm -hmm. turned every situation around for my good. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Ooh, this interview has been so <laughs> awesome talking to you, Keisha. I you am too, so Carl. looking forward to this project dropping. How can people get the project? How can people contact you and how can they follow you on social media? All of my social media is Keisha Grandy and I don't have an E in my name. <laughs> it's K-I-S-H-A. <laughs> K-I-S-H-A, my last name is Grandy, G-R-A-N, as in Nancy D-Y. Keisha Grandy on Instagram, it's the official Keisha Grandy, no E, K-I-S-H-A, Keisha Grandy. Um, The project will be on all platforms, uh, Spotify, Pandora, um, any place that you can buy music, it will be there for purchase. So yeah, uh, for booking, you will contact Lamont McCoy, um, and you can reach him at keelyentertainment.com. Keely Entertainment. So, yes. So, we got to get you to Detroit. 
we got to get you to Detroit. We got to get you. Yeah, we got to got to work something out so you can come bring all that power. That that Bible that 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 paper Bible power, because yes. the way you talking, yeah, mm. <laughs> that hairstyle, yeah, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody, Ooh, we are cool. talking to Keisha Grandy. Make sure you get her new project. It's called Reborn. Again, Keisha, thank you so much for hanging out with me on the Carl B. Phillips Show. Just a thank reminder you. to everybody to remember to work like you don't need the money. Love like you've never been hurt and dance like no one's watching you. God bless until we meet again. Peace. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Thank you for listening to The Carl B. Phillips Show. For more information, go to carlbphillips.com. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Follow Carl B. Phillips on Instagram so we can stay in contact with each other.